Welcome to Range World, the podcast where life, development, leadership, growth, intentionality, and experience come into balance right before your very ears. And now, here's your tour guide into Range World, the president of Get Life in Balance, Rain Kansman. Hey, welcome back to Rain's World. And today I have Lisa Dubs with me. Now, when you ask Lisa how she got started in the food service industry, she smiles and says, I was born into the food service industry. She was raised in Northern New Jersey by her parents, grandparents, aunts, and uncles, all owned businesses or worked in the food industry. So she was born into the food industry. After college, she continued for her passion for the hospitality business and in 1995 she went to work for cisco corporation whereas we met mm -hmm. she had been her career there was in sales sales management training and development procurement marketing and business <laughs> development lisa loves to cook entertain and continues to learn about new food and business concepts every day in fact before we started this she was talking about one yes. i have i've been to her house when she entertains it's like everything, everything is there. So welcome, Lisa. Hi, Rain. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Look, I'm still smiling when you said that because I think about that all the time and go, you know, it was a great path that I was born into and I actually enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> most, people, most people are like, oh, I'm born into that path and I don't like it. And I'm like, I yeah. loved mine. Yeah, oh, that's so great, great to hear. That's yeah. great to hear. I'm sure some phenomenal memories. Yes, I do have to say I do. So. so that was the fun part. Now we're going to get to the difficult part, right? Because um, what I asked Lisa was, what skills were important to her when she faced difficult situations? And I said, wow, what a, what a great question. Yeah. <laughs> what a, a, a difficult situation. So, so skills. Hmm? So, yeah. yeah. You know, um, I, I do want to talk about like difficult situations first to say okay. you know if you are you, you could be in difficult situations any any time it's not always in the workplace it could be at home it could be you know out shopping it could be wherever you could be at a right. function and yeah. you could be in a difficult situation um if we talk about the workplace first thing i'd really like to say is you as a leader or if you're even if you're just a team member is it an HR situation or is it a problem solving situation? Uh -huh, I like that. There, there are some times that you just have to say, okay, I need to decipher. And again, whether you're a team member or whether you're the leader or the manager or whoever you are, you're a participant. Are you dealing with an HR problem or a problem solving problem? Most of the time I find, cause I believe wholeheartedly people come to work or want to be at work. I always did. I always did because I wanted to be there. I wanted yeah. to grow, I wanted to be part. So mm -hmm. I'm going to go with the part that says those people really want to be there and they're, they're learning. So, you know, when it comes to um, like the problem solving part, I really feel the strongest skill that I, that you ever have to have, you should have is active listening. Okay. I love that. Because you, you, if you're not listening to the other person and I'm thinking you, I believe you probably know what I'm talking about, active listening. Mm -hmm. Are you really listening to what the person's saying? Are you watching their facial features? Are you watching, you know, are they doing this with their hands? Like, are they nervous mm -hmm. and stuff like that? So when you actively listen to somebody um, and you establish what's going on as a leader, or, and I don't want to even say as a leader, just as mm -hmm. another person, Sometimes you just have to sit back and you literally have to say to yourself, don't get, don't get my emotions in. Yeah. You actually have to say it in your head and listen and okay. listen to that person. The other one is communication. You know, um, ask lots of questions. You always want to ask questions. And then it comes down to problem solving. There's no one size fits all and creativity comes in where no idea is too crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so those to me are the 
three big skills that I would say for problem solving, if you're actively listening to somebody mm -hmm. and you're communicating, listen, establishing facts, ask questions, stuff mm -hmm. like that. And then you try to solve the problem because that's why there's a difficult situation. What's yeah. the problem? Yep. Yep. I love <laughs> that. And you could be at home. Sure. Okay. Sure. Or, you know, you're with your spouse, with your child, could, yeah. you know, it, it could be, it doesn't always have to be at the workplace. It's like, so what is the problem is really what you're after. So I, it, here's a couple of things I want to highlight from what you said, and thank you for this. This was some, some real gold. The first is, I think the first two skills you talked about would be appropriate in the HR situation. Once you figure it out, it's an HR situation, then don't problem solve, get HR involved, right? Right. But uh, the collaborative approach to that, especially in a leadership role, shows that you value that team member's opinion and on this and, and you just don't take it over. So I love the fact that we're asking those open-ended questions and really trying to listen to yeah. figure out what they're trying to say rather than form our own reply. Very cool. So why, let's start with, with the listening. Why is it an effective skill for you? You know, I just feel like it, um, it helps somebody calm down. Like if, again, so if there's a problem, mm -hmm. there, there's emotion in there. There yeah. you're going, and, and you never know somebody else's background or where they were raised or, you know, if they have a, a, a sore point about something, you just you never, you never know. It could be when they're a child, could be from something they've tried. Sure. So I feel that it just makes them calm down and when you know that somebody's listening to you, mm -hmm. you speak a little freer. Yeah, and, because they're there for you, right? Yeah, you're, you're not afraid to, and, and the other part is, you know, you're not being judged, you know? So it's that feeling of like when you communicate with somebody and you they start to talk about like problem solving or they start asking you questions about like facts, like what's mm -hmm. going on, um, you don't feel judged because it's not personal. Mm -hmm. it's what's going on that's creating that situation for you no, i like so, that you know i i think that's you know when you're you're uh you know I, I, we're talking about leadership but so your employees i don't care if they're your customers whoever they are are your greatest asset mm -hmm. so if you can let them be creative right or think out of the box or tell you what the situation is they're going to do the best work for you. You're going to get the best answer ever. Yeah. You just sometimes, and again, I'm going to say this because it's not as easy as I'm, um, you know, right. verbalizing. Sometimes you have to literally sit there and say, don't talk. Listen. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. Have, I love that. You And for me, that's off. That's yeah. tough. Mm -hmm. You know? So, you know, and if you let people, um, I feel like if somebody's calm mm -hmm. and they don't feel like they're being judged, they're more open-minded yeah. and then they'll, they'll go on. And then as a leader, you sit there and go, aha, that's what's really going on here. Yep. 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 You know? So yeah, absolutely. They're, um, uh, you're setting the environment so that they can open up to you mm -hmm. and, and then the idea of them coming up with something there's more of a commitment behind that. If they come up with their own solution, there's more of a commitment. I love those pieces. So tell me why um, effective asking effective questions, holding your emotions and asking effective questions is a, is effective for you. Um, Cause it goes right back to listening. So when I ask those questions and then you listen to what somebody's saying mm -hmm. to me, I, to what, for me in my experience is I yeah. usually can understand where they're coming from. Yeah. And say, and sometimes it's as silly as I can't get my computer to work right. or I, you know, I'm not communicating with this person or I can't get the information or I don't know, or mm -hmm. I'm afraid of something. And then when you say to somebody, well, you know, it's goes back to empathy. Everybody right. has to learn. Yep. I had to learn. And Absolutely. when I, the, my greatest mentors were the people that took five minutes to show, oh no, try it this way. 
Uh huh. Uh huh. I love like, that. Oh my gosh, I never really thought about that. Mm-hmm. Or guess what? It's okay to move that if it's in your way. Right. <laughs> nobody's, right. Nobody's making you leave it there. So I mean, those are simple things. Sometimes you know things are a lot harder. Um, but that's for me. That's. I love it. So so I think also as you how you frame a cut question can either build on that environment that you're doing or destroy it right mm-hmm. and and that's why i usually recommend to people to avoid why questions yeah because it puts people on the defensive instead saying you know so what brought you to that conclusion or how did you come about uh this situation how did you discover this situation wasn't working for you or right. you know those kind of things so great and and what about uh problem solving uh, i know it's kind of almost required in a management role or a leadership role but what about problem solving specifically do you find needs to be effective outside of the questions and the listening um you know there's no one size fits all in okay. problem problem solving so mm-hmm. it is to to me again what is your goal where are you what what are you after like how do you okay. make it a win-win situation and again not a personal not an emotional situation what is it that you're after so mm-hmm. if you're problem solving you know what steps are you going through what do you have to look back what do you have to look back on you mm-hmm. know and I, I feel like when you talk to people and maybe you go through that process with them because sometimes you say let me understand mm-hmm. so let what you I did like they actually, you keep doing that when people know that then they talk to you, that you're going to go through those steps. I actually, you know what? I used to work with somebody and they used to go, okay, let's back this situation up yep. to where we ran into the obstacle. Oh, and they used to do that all the time. They used I to like go, literally go like this. Let's back the situation up. And then they would go. And when, when people learn that, right. Um, they start to do it themselves. They were like, oh, you know, all right, let me see. Let me just go try what Rain just taught me. You know, mm-hmm. let me go, go try that. And then I find that people that really are listening or have success with it, pass it on. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. That I mean, when I get to problem solving, that's really what I do. Where did I run into the issue? I like that. Getting to the root cause. And I love the idea about role modeling that because the more we can get our team to take care of and solve their own problems the less we have to be the hero running in right on the white horse even though that's it's a fun feeling to to come to the rescue you know these people outside of work they function great Mm -hmm. they're leaders in their community (laughs) and and do this and yet sometimes we don't feel they can handle a simple thing But you know what also makes what feels really great? Have you ever been at one of those meetings and then you actually see somebody say, Well, let's back this up? Yeah. And yeah, let's yeah. and you to me, I'm like, that's that's the white horse again. There you go. Yeah. And I just sit back and smile and go, This is fantastic. I love it. You know? um, I love it. Not always that easy to do, but no. it it it's great when that happens to me. That's that's success. I love that. So we have one more question for you. Mm -hmm. And you said it's not easy to do. So as a new manager or new leader, Mm -hmm. how can you develop those kind of skills, the three skills you talked about? Well, um, a lot of it's experience. And there are, you know, different workshops and places you can go to. I mean, I know you do life, but you do tremendous workshops for people. And sometimes it's when you do that, when you go places like that, it's that aha moment yeah. that you actually learn or the, um, you know, the real, maybe it was your perception of, of a mm-hmm. situation, but you know, for honestly, a lot of times um, it's experience and it comes, you know, from a good situation or a bad situation. I mean, it, it could be as, um, and I don't want to say simple, but it can be, you know, negotiating to buy a house or a car or deciding to buy something like when you're at the supermarket or where you're going to sit when you go to a concert or, or, or people, you know, um, it could also be like negotiating like um, a salary for a job or somebody right. say, I'm going to go look for a new job because you know what, there's too much travel in, here, in this position for me and it's not working with my life. Yeah. So you know, these different skills come in 
or, or I feel like, you know, communicating and problem solving is you learn it, but if you're aware that it happens to you every day in mm-hmm. every situation, I think uh, for me, my experience has been, I learned from that. Yeah. Yeah. So I love that too. Uh, for me, my best listening practice is when I listen to Minnie, my wife, you know, be, again, <laughs> important <me>. relationship, <laughs> important relationship. And I can tell you, I, you know, you get home, you've talked to this individual, we've been married 42 years now. And, you know, you talk to this individual every day and sometimes mm-hmm. you're not all in and, and I want to be all in, right? So it was great practice for me to do at home uh, to help me work on the listening. And uh, I love the idea about just simple everyday stuff to practice these skills with. And the last piece I'm going to add is I think one other piece, and I've done this with Lisa before, is ask for feedback. Hey, you know, tell me about when I worked through that problem, what could you see I could have done better? What did I do well? Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, ask for feedback. Don't, you know, don't let your ego get in the way. Ask for that feedback. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Well, very cool, Lisa. This is some good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I know you've worked through some difficult situations. That's why I chose you for this task. <laughs> I think we all have. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we we communicate quite a bit on those difficult times. So yeah. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Well, it's been a pleasure having you. Same Look here. forward to seeing you live soon. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Lisa. Thanks. See you. Bye. This has been another leadership lesson from Rain's World. If this kind of learning whets your appetite, leaving you wanting for another helping of this kind of content, visit me at getlifeandbalance.com.